Uh, and we are live in Drummond's, Tennessee. I'm going to check my phone and make sure we're live. I know we are because it said we are. But we are rolling. And yes, we're in a different spot, but we are at the house. D Doug, you got to get back in frame. You're out of frame here. Yeah. <laughs> so, everybody, tonight, obviously, we've got. Mr. Doug Stringer, and I have to look because the camera's backwards. Team owner, <laughs> Stringer Performance. Mr. Steve Cole, he is the president of marketing for our race team. And y'all have seen Doug on here many, many times. You've done live a couple times, I think. I know you've done it at least once. Yeah, we did. What are you saying? You need to scoot back. I think that. It, yes, so because Doug's cut and off. There we go. Now we don't have to like set so close but i'm just going to tell y'all now we're around each other all the time so don't worry about the no mass thing because race team race family that's all there is to it but we're going to have a little fun tonight everybody just going to hang out talk tell some stories and just talk about what's going on what's going to go on and what has went on more or less so we're going to start it off just simply why these guys are here race shops in mcleansboro illinois which is doug's home Mr. California, your Belinda area? Your Belinda right. now, but not originally. Not originally. That. So we are in town. It's always town for me because this is Drummond's, it's home. But we're in town. We're going to go see the good folks at Parts Plus tomorrow. We're talking about what we did in 2020, what we're going to do in 21 and beyond. So I think in some sort of way, I just made a press announcement there, didn't I? Yeah, sort of. Sort of it leaked it. Leaked it. Y'all got breaking news right here, as if you didn't already have figured this out. Parts Plus is back again. Ooh, I should know this. I think it is year eleven for me. Right. Eleven years for me, and we were trying to figure this out earlier too. This out. Parts oh. Plus is back again. That's Ooh. my phone. <laughs> That's my phone. Sorry. First of all, I hope everybody can hear us okay. We've got my laptop slid way back because we are having to sit here together like this. But how many years have me and you done this, Doug? We, th we think it's six, six, six or six, I think it's six. So I don't know how we talked about this before, before I jump on coal here. But <laughs> so everybody knows that Doug works with Great Clips, has, still does. And you wouldn't be a good racer if you didn't know a buddy that had, you know, something to do with a company. And let's just put it this way. I chased Doug for years and years and years to get great clips involved with drag racing. And this is a really long story and it burned <laughs> up our entire hour. But let's just say this. I showed up at Doug's house for a party pre, you know, prior to the Leffler Memorial race, which you've done for many, many years now, you and Todd Braun and a bunch of your buddies and, uh, raises money for Charlie Dean at that race. If y'all have never been, check it out. It's an awesome little race at Wayne County Speedway. Happens usually, when is that? Like October? Yeah, about October. 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 So anyway, I showed up, hung out, and pretty much when the Doug tells this better, I'll let you take it from here. Pretty much I, sh I showed up for the party. We had the dragster there and something about the truck rolling down the driveway. Yeah, next morning the truck, we, we thought it would be a great added feature to have clay in the car there something different it was uh, and it was it was very cool <laughs> um and uh truck rolls down the driveway in my house on the next morning and i get up and stand on the deck and watch it and called clay up uh my might have been the same day i can't even remember i said you really think we could do this and he said yeah you're just gonna have to come down here we're gonna have to go talk to some people and that's it. Where we are. So the truth on the rest of that story, here's the rest of the story. So Doug said, uh, you know, I'm a funny car guy. <laughs> yeah. Would you drive a funny car? And I'm like, of course. I thought driving a funny car would still be way better than trying to get my job back driving a forklift, which I can do that too. And I have done it. And, and I will again if I need to, but uh, he's like, will you drive a funny car? And I'm like, sure I will, you know. And 
we talked about what funny car bodies cost. And at that point, Doug's like, I kind of like them dragsters. Yep. Yeah, it was a 30-second <laughs> conversion factor. <laughs> so what? how did we move from that conversation to doing it? I, well, the year was, was up. Your, your year was coming to a close. And uh, flew down here and, and uh, went and met with uh, Steve Tucker. And at the time, the... Um, Mike Lambert. Uh, Mike Lambert. Yep. And president of president Plus. And talked to them. Uh, went to Great Clips also and, and had some conversations with them. Um, and they were willing to come on board for a couple of years to, to help get the ball rolling. And we, in November, made our deal. I didn't have a race shop at all or any race equipment at the time per se, other than I had a nice toolbox with a couple of screwdrivers and some wrenches in it. A couple. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we knew this guy named Lance Larson, and he was really good at acquiring parts and pieces and teaching people. And uh, we latched on to him and flew around the United States looking at cars and parts and pieces. And then it seems like I was at the St. Louis race, and Clay walked me over to Steve Torrance's pit. And I took one look at Steve Torrance's car, and I just was sure that was the way our car needed to look. And that's the type of equipment that we needed. Um, we didn't talk about money at the time, but, uh, you know, if you all are familiar with Capco racing, their, their equipment is, uh, is, uh, top notch, but it's also, also well kept. And, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing at a couple things, y'all. We'll get to it. Keep going. And you know, yeah, realize that if we can only have one item to go to the starting line with Clay driving it that we needed to have the best we possibly could because we, we owed it to our sponsors like uh, parts plus and, you know, great gentleman there named Steve Tucker just really wanted to uh, make him proud. Uh, <laughs> He's and, proud. He just, he just called us the good, the bad, the ugly. So I'll get the one out of the way right now. I'll take the ugly one. Okay. You guys can figure out the good and bad. And so then we took off you know, we ran from there. Yes, we did. And, I'm trying to think because I am so bad with dates. I am the world's worst statistician, but I'm going to back up real quick because I see uh, Mr. Jake Hodge, my, uh, my partner in the uh, great American guaranteed million who uh, helped me along with the, uh, all the television stuff we did on motor mania. He's wanting to know if we need someone to narrate every weekend of the parks plus team. What do you think my job is, Jake? I narrate everything. I talk much as you do, although you get paid to talk and I get paid to drive and you make things break. That's all we that's all we need to say. Every time you go somewhere, you have flat tires, you have stuff catch on fire. And anyway, enough of Jake Hodge. He's my buddy, but uh, we get, we do got Mr. Tucker watching, which is kind of cool. Yes. So, you know, we have to act right. Absolutely. I just hope he feels well tonight. I hope he's feeling good. And uh, on, on, on his game. <laughs> All right. So this is what, what, how many years will this be? You've been working with us. This will be my third year. Third year officially. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna steal this line from a, from another podcast that I listen to. So, and it's actually Don O'Neill and Cameron Ray's uh, Racer and Rental Car Podcast. Give us the thirty thousand foot elevator pitch. Of Mr. Steve Cole. Well, you know, I don't have all the experience of you guys in racing, but I do have 25 years of experience. And I know, Clay, you started a lot younger than I did. <laughs> I didn't start under the hood of the car. I started on the sides of the car and the top of the car and wherever I could sell sponsorships. But um, but I I was uh, I I cut my teeth in the mid 90s with a with a guy named Dale Earnhardt Sr. The man himself. Yep, and he was introduced to me by uh, by my boss uh, Fred Wagonhalls. He used to run a company called Action Performance, and he basically told me we have all the rights to all these drivers and drag racing and IndyCar and NASCAR, and your job is to figure out a way to sell their stuff. So you got to do two things: you got to Build the brand of the driver, and oh, by the way, you got to go to all the sponsors and tell them to change the paint schemes every few races <laughs> <laughs> so we can sell more t shirts. So, I want to back up for a minute. So, you grow up in upstate New York, yes, Buffalo. So, how does a guy from 
Buffalo end up working with Dale Earnhardt Sr.? Well, I started working in racing through about three different paths, uh, starting back in Buffalo. Uh, I was doing uh, some internship work for a sports marketing company that represented the Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Sabres, and then the, uh, the Meyer League baseball team there. And of course, you cut your teeth with these athletes and you get to meet a lot of people at their golf events and everything. Well, my one buddy who was a school buddy of mine, he ended up moving to Phoenix and representing professional golfers from Arizona State and U of A. And he said, are you tired of that Buffalo cold weather yet? And I said, oh, sure. I was tired of it when I was born. <laughs> I, I'm a warm weather guy. I just happened to grow up in Buffalo. Um, he said, why don't you come out to Phoenix and uh, we'll represent some golfers together. Well, I did that for a little while until I was standing on the golf, uh, on the green, and this guy come over to me, big tall guy, and he said, hey, are you working for that golf uh, agent over there? I said, yes, sir. And he said, well, my son's the greatest. Of course, all their sons are the greatest, okay? So is that like baseball dads? That is baseball dads, but this is golf oh, wait, dads. Oh, junior dragster dads. Junior dragster dads I've come to <laughs> appreciate over the years, and moms. Um, but their son was the greatest golfer ever. And so anyway, make, make things short. I made an impression on this guy, even though I told him his son wasn't right for our agency. Um, he called me a few weeks later and said, you'd be really good in racing. You know much about racing? I said, well, I used to go to racing my whole life. Grew up watching Shirley Muldowney and Don Garlitz race in Niagara Falls, uh, Air Force Base on the drag strip there. They put uh, where the planes landed and go to Lancaster Speedway and, and see the uh, Modifieds on Saturday night and stuff. So I was always around racing. My dad took me to a lot of racing. But I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll try it. Well, I got to his office in Phoenix, and he said, here's a ticket to North Carolina. You're going to go meet with my partner. Well, I get to North Carolina, and his partner's Dale Earnhardt Sr. Wow. wow. <laughs> and so uh, – So did you actually – like your meeting was with – it wasn't like some some people of Dale Earnhardt? No, I met with Fred Wagonhals, who was the founder of the company and the owner, and he had a partner uh, that he didn't tell me about. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When you flew to North Carolina, it, you actually met with Dale Sr. I met actually with his daughter, Kelly, who owned a company called Image Works, and, that was, um, and there was a couple other companies. Sports Image was another company Dale owned, and I uh, met with her, and she's great, and... Um, then we met with her dad, and I stayed there for a little while and learned the ropes, and Fred said, come on the road with me. And so I learned racing 1996, 97 window. So, yeah, been doing it ever since and love it. So what was it like meeting him for the first time? I Incredible. Mean, uh, I mean, were you, like, scared, ready to poop your pants kind of thing? Or basically, what? yeah. If, if I didn't. If I didn't already work in professional sports, I probably would have been a fan. <laughs> Just right. jumping, Dale Earnhardt, Dale yeah. Earnhardt, the man in black, the intimidator. But I had to hold my composure. And uh, and what I learned about Dale real quick was he was very much about business. He, he wanted to make sure I understood that side of racing with Fred. And those two together taught me the total business side. And I never really got to know the racer side of Dale because – when I walked into a room, it was about business. So he was like, you're here to learn business, not learn racing. But the good thing was I got to go to all these great races and watch Dale do his thing on the racetrack. Wow. So it was, it was amazing. I'm very blessed. So you and Fred and Earnhardt, I mean, to me, that was kind of like when the collectible thing like really rocketed. It was. It was. Uh, we had some great young drivers like Jeff Gordon coming in the mix and Jimmy Johnson. So we had this great group of young kids and we married them with these great, amazing, you know, champions like Rusty Wallace and Bill Elliott and obviously Dale. Um, and it was really a, a cool experience to get the young and the old together um, and sell merchandise. And wow. really what we were doing was we were marketing. We were a marketing company, Fred always said, that just happened to sell merchandise. So, so was, would you say that Fred and Senior were the leading edge of the collectible thing, or was it already kind of starting to go at that point? No, Dale and Fred definitely were the ones that cut the cutting edge. Dale was very ahead of his time. 
getting a lot of his buddies, Neil Bonnet and these guys signed up to do trackside trailers with them. And what was great about Dale was he had that vision of, of creating this carnival atmosphere at the racetracks where you could obviously profit from it outside of the sponsorships and stuff. Plus, he was always obviously very good about GM Goodwrench and getting their name out there. And this was another way to get a piece of GM Goodwrench in the fans' hands. So he duplicated that trailer concept. Meantime, on the West Coast, Fred was building diecast cars. So they got together and Fred said, basically, look, I got this much money. Let's build a black number three diecast car. And that was the history of action in the motorsports world. And, and Dale and Fred, yeah, they, they were the cutting edge of building that industry. So I got to ask this, the fanboys just coming out in me on this. So, man, I guess it don't matter. I can just ask whatever, right? Yeah, it's it doesn't open matter. season. It doesn't matter. So how much did Teresa have to do with that? Um, um, <laughs> when Dale wasn't in the room, she had a lot to do with it. Okay. All right. That's what I'm <laughs> but Dale curious. was always good about understanding uh, we have to get things approved on time to get into the fans. So, but yeah, Teresa was great to work with too. So since we're not in the uh, – in the normal spot so donna's bringing me notes this time and she i'm just going to tell y'all she thought it was important to know actually for me to mention that mr vic wood our buddy vic wood is watching mm -hmm. i didn't mention tucker's watching vic our boy jeff lutz is watching what's up jeff everybody and hope his golf cart's in good shape it's, uh, it's, it's kind, kind of that time of year it's that time it? of year yeah. jeff lutz has golf cart problems this time of year y'all i'm just going to tell you from losing seats windshields to making me put fuel pumps on it that's about this time of year that's for sure so i saw a question roll by there a minute i'm gonna kind of bounce back and yeah, forth sure. here so uh, mr michael upchurch who's going to do my wikipedia at some point wants to know doug what and i don't think he maybe he did specifically mean drag racing but what if i if, favorite run or favorite race how about that favorite run favorite race since you did so much in nascar as well i can't I, there's there's don't have one i do oh you do well yeah. let's just hear about yeah. it. final round bristol final round bristol so we had the same one yes I'm, <laughs> I, I mean we won homestead that was the very first race i ever ever won as a car owner with casey king driving that was that was great um uh, you know yeah winning really, homestead's a big deal <laughs> yeah it was father's day yeah in bristol yeah it was, oh, yeah. It was uh that was that that's all big, I got. That was big. It was big was, for you and me both. That was big. I mean, that was, was a big one. That's for sure. That was definitely a big one. I'm gonna ask the same question for you, even though Michael was asking that to Doug. And it don't none of this has to do with me or Doug. Favorite race that that you've been a part of, and you've done a lot. I mean, we've been sitting here talking about Earnhardt. Obviously, you worked with John Force for a long time. You mentioned yeah, Richard Petty. You Payne. mentioned Richard Petty. I mean, you know, um, yeah. You know. Um, I would say to to be witness to Dale win the million in Talladega in 2000 was pretty amazing. Um, believe it or not, Tony Pedregon's first championship um, with John Force, he won it in Las Vegas, and I actually was able to do a program for action at the time to put uh, the Kiss band on the car. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I knew too. And Tony won in the Kiss car. Um, so to me personally, that was a lot of work to get that program going. And to this day, I still do uh, do some stuff here and there um, with the Kiss guys back and forth, just some small things because I've been friends with them for years. Um, but that was a neat program to see because I know how much John was upset that we changed the car and Castro was fine with it. And right. He ends up winning his first championship with this Kiss car. Awesome. But you know what? We've got another four-year deal out of Kiss because of that win. <laughs> so thank you, Tony. Exactly, exactly. Speaking of that, what is probably – I'm going to ask several different versions of this same question. Like maybe the craziest – one-off kind of thing you've ever done? I mean, Kiss has obviously got to be near the top, but what other kind of one-off crazy things have, have you been involved with? Well, um, I mean, it wasn't just me. We had a great team behind us at Action, obviously, but um, but we, we built a lot of programs. Um, some of the craziest stuff, you know, like Chevy came to us one year and said, hey, 
you know, we want to do something really big um, for the, the Chevy 400 in Richmond. And so me and, uh, and my boss at the time, David Hines, went out to Warner Brothers. We got all the, the Looney Tunes characters. I mean, we brought them in the boardroom. And I remember Bill France going, looking at us going, you want to put these cartoon characters on our race cars? Yes, sir, we do. And, uh, and, and we did do that. And that was a pretty crazy because that was a time where, you know, we were just trying to, to market you know, our products, but we wanted to give the fans something pretty cool. And we wanted to do some cross cross marketing and branding and stuff. And um, so that was a pretty crazy, but probably the best moment was when we got called to the trailer in Chicago land speedway. The first weekend it opened the Tropicana race sponsored that race. Here come the oranges. <laughs> we had just, we, we had just uh, did a, a Muppets program unveiling and we were running Muppets cars that weekend. So we had like six so or eight cars, multiple drivers, multiple drivers. Uh, Ray Abraham was a, was a great partner with us on that. We had on his driver's cars, including the great Bill Elliott, Dale Jarrett. So we had all these drivers with Kermit the Frog and Animal and everything on there. And we got to the racetrack and the newspapers and ESPN were calling the race the Muppets 400, not the Tropicana 400. <laughs> so we got called to the trailer that day. And in the middle of us getting beat down by Bill Jr., a large orange went rolling yeah. down the track. <laughs> so that meeting got cut short because they had a bigger problem. They had a Tropicana orange rolling down the track. But um, but they did end up making us take the um, – taking the Muppets off property. And so I had some explaining to do because at the time Jim Henson's son was there at the racetrack and he said, well, this was a bust. And I said, no, it's not a bust. It's an opportunity. I went across the, the street. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me just stop for a minute. So NASCAR kicked Kermit the Frog out of the racetrack. Yeah. And Fozzie <laughs> the Bear and the Swedish Chef and the whole group of them. So I had to improvise. So we and our team actually came up with uh, a plan that the, that the Chicagoland Speedway was sold out and the Muppets couldn't get tickets because they're all over the place. So they forgot to get tickets. So we tried to put a positive spin on it. Well, we had to shoot some video, obviously. They wouldn't let us back in the track with them. So I went across the street, found a farmer that had property that touched the property of Chicagoland Speedway. I said, do you mind if we put the Muppets in your cornfield? He looked at me. I thought he was going to get a gun. Like, <laughs> shoot me off his property. He said, I don't know what you're talking about, son, but you go ahead and do what you got to do. So we shot some footage, and, uh, and we got the promotion out there. Later that night, we're sitting at a bar in downtown Chicago thinking, did this, like, even move the needle at all? Of course, ESPN at the time was our coverage, and, you know, they always have their lead-ins. They're like – you know, LeBron this or Michael Jordan this or whatever. And oh, by the way, trouble at Chicagoland Speedway with Muppet Gate. So they called it Muppet Gate. <laughs> so anyway, to make a long story short, at the end of the day, Bill Jr. made a rule in the rule book for the racetracks under Muppet Gate that they are not allowed to have all these outside uh, licensed products or, co or companies come into the sport. And kind of take over without like the track known and everything. So anyway, little little folklore there that got me in trouble. Muppet Gate. Muppet, but Muppet Gate. Gate. Look Gate. it up. Google it. It's still out there. <laughs> so Doug, in your NASCAR time, did you ever get called to the big red trailer, which is like <laughs> getting called to the principal's office? For us drag racers, it'd be like getting called to the tower. Did you ever get called to the big red trailer for anything? Yeah, probably. I mean, I know some stories here. I'm just going to tell you, I know some things that might have been in the gray area, so I'm just asking without throwing you under the bus. The gray area is where you're supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's a reason it's racing. <laughs> um, most of the, the directors, like Joe Balish and myself, became very close friends due to quite a few of those meetings in those trailers. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we were there. Yeah, numerous times, and so was Cole's employer. Spent a couple times on the couch with him, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, f for, for rules infraction or other infractions? Or just fractions, which I don't know how to add up anyway. Um, I guess somebody turned their head scratching their neck. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, probably rules. I mean, we're not in NASCAR. We're in, in 
There were probably a few personality conflicts, and there was probably some rule infractions, you know. So, um, for 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 sure. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't, I, can't, I can't dig this out of you, y'all. No, I mean, there's, there's, boy, back in the day, we all went to the trailer. I mean, it was a, it was a, here's the famous word in culture that's guaranteed. All right, but don't bring it back next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Promise we won't. What did they say? Ask for forgiveness? Yes, not permit. Not, not permission. permission. That's, right. that's right. Oh, well. All right. So I see I'm not going to get out stories about, Carburetors that were built in Southern Illinois are. <laughs> oh, I don't think the manufacturer would appreciate it. <laughs> Even in Mount Carmel, Illinois. Yeah, I don't know. So we, we've got just for coal. Ooh, Whitney donut. must be in the house. A donut. So I'm going to tell this story because I don't think Cole should tell it. This ought to be good. And I'm going to change names to protect the innocent. Yes. But <laughs> I am. Right. I'm not saying any names, but at some point, Cole was working on chasing sponsorship and doing what Cole does. He's working with the manufacturer uh, that was not part of our program. This guy needed to borrow a car. Cole let him borrow the car. <laughs> when the car showed back up later, it had a donut on it. Let's just say there might have been an infraction with a curb that busted the wheel on Cole's rental car. And I didn't do it. It wasn't me. And it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't, it wasn't me. me. So uh, that is my first time in all those years that I've rented a car and I've ever had to worry about it coming back. Uh, <laughs> not one piece. But thank you, Whitney, for the donut and the story. Uh, well, I think Greg Fernelli actually was able to forecast that event. He you? did. He come over at me. Uh, and if you don't know Greg Fernelli, he's one of SRI, our, our best also, buddies. Yep. Yeah. Uh, best man at my wedding, him and Pat Wood, great guys in the racing industry. But honestly, they were like, Cole, the guy trashed your car. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, where? And I'm saying, I turn around. I'm like, well, my car's sitting right there outside the pit area. And it was leaning like one side. And yes, it did have a donut on it. Not this good one. But, uh, <laughs> donut from the back seat. And um, let's just say... Um, if you don't know me in the racing world and how much I love our partners like Parts Plus, uh, I will tell you that this guy could have had uh, all the money in the world and he was not going to be part of our family. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry about that. But um, it's yes, it's thank you for bringing that up. It was yes. an unfortunate yes. incident. There's Whitney stirring up trouble again. And for those of y'all that don't know, Whitney is Doug's much better half and she's, uh, she's, like Donna, our conscience from time to time. Yeah, and Donna not being in the same room and Whitney not being in this room and then being able to communicate is probably not going to be not good for either one of us on this program. No. So, all right. So I'm going to ask each of y'all the same question. I, I I tried to get something out of Brett Kepner last week, who was awesome, by the way. I'm sure Brett's probably watching this. We had him on for a few weeks in a row. He's a freaking legend. I love the guy. Stories are awesome, and we're going to do more with Brett. But if I'm going to actually go with you first on this one. So if there was something you could change in drag racing to make it better, and, and I'm, I, you know, for the fans, for you, whatever, if you're suddenly president, king, dictator of NHRA drag racing, what, what would Cole do to, to make it better? Well, what would be your vision of making it better? I guess, how about that? My vision for making it better obviously has to start on the business side first. Um, the economics of racing has to change a little bit. We need to make sure that uh, that certain things happen to keep our drivers out there uh, every week and give the fans the best show possible. Um, I don't know if that's the politically correct answer. Oh, this is our show. We but that's the first thing I would change um, if we if we look at the economics of racing on the owner side. And it's not just because Doug's sitting here, but we live it and breathe it every day. All three of us do. Um, you know that that needs to change a little bit. Um, I think overall, I think listening to the fans and letting them understand that we are here for their entertainment and that your voice does matter. And I think that there's some things out there that, that I've read online from some of the fans that, that make good sense to give us a good show. Um, 
but yeah, the economics is always where I'm going to start and end because I live it every day. Uh oh, Ray said, I know, Ray. Cole's answer, non answer. And I kind of agree with Justin Holfelt, our engine builder, our short block engine builder. More night runs. I'm all for that. Actually, I wish there was, I'm going to give my answer right now before I go to you. My answer is let's do some nighttime racing. And I don't mean just Friday night qualifying. I say less Doug will hate this, but I'm all for it. Like first round should be at seven o'clock, you know, when you wrap it up about one o'clock in the morning, final round, whistling down through there, fireworks. You're on the other side of the clock than I am, though, right? <laughs> yes, I am on the other side of the clock. But I think more night runs would be awesome. I think a nighttime race would be awesome. And if I was, uh, I seen Charles Miller was laughing because I said if you were the dictator of NHRA, but I think we should do some nighttime races. That would be my answer. Now your turn. Well, I've been watching the people on here, and I noticed that Glenn, Glenn Cromwell and Peter Clifford aren't on there, so I'll give an honest answer. Um, <laughs> I know we are naming names. Oh, but okay. I, I did name drop there. Well, it's our show. That's it is right? our, it's our show. show. It's our show. I, I, I checked the advertisers on, on their show, and NHRA wasn't on there yet, but they're – we're taking we'll work sponsors on that. and we'll work on yeah. that. We could put NHRA in the other corner away from Parks Plus Motorsports. That's right. right. Yeah. A, a condensed show is always probably more exciting. You know, from a track promoter, they like three day shows, you get three day selections of fans, and, uh, you know, attendance numbers are up. Uh, and But, uh, you know, it's kind of, I'm, I'm going to flip around here just a little bit. I listened to a podcast I was telling you about on the way here with uh, James Finch and, and Dale Jr. Yeah. talking about back when NASCAR was, you know, in his heyday. And yeah. James spoke of a time that he won, I believe it was the Bristol race. And uh, NASCAR gave him his check and, and he gave it back to him. He says, Evan, you guys need this more than I do. Um, he said he counted, you know, the attendance. And he said they averaged about 11 cents is what they paid for the purse for him to win. Um, <laughs> So the purse structure within an HRA probably prohibits a lot of, of teams to compete at the level which they need to compete at. The Just like any form of racing, though, we choose to go to the racetrack. We choose to, to go and compete because it's our passion, but it's also a living for a lot of these people. Um, I saw Everybody Chris, at this table. Yeah, I saw Krista Baldwin pop up. Yeah, yeah I saw her too. Ball. And, uh, yeah. and – uh, she she understands definitely what we talk about yep. her her grandpa right yeah grandpa is, is the, the legendary Greek yep and so he has raced for uh, we won't, I won't even guess the years and you know he's struggled you know we've all struggled the same battle and that's the the financial support to maintain a professional program mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to answer the question what did you said what would you change I would go to nighttime races. I would do those nighttime events on Saturday. I would have qualifying Saturday during the day, and I would do qualifying run on Friday night. I would make sure that we had Sunday available for a rain date yep. so that it would enhance our ability to retain employees that maybe were going to come part-time could be back to work on Monday. Yep. Uh, so that's one thing that I'd change. The other thing I'd change is the scrutiny within the safety level of, this, of, of our particular uh, top fuel categories, meaning that uh, more more educated technical staff supporting the the NHRA uh, the NHRA sanctioning body. For instance, when there's an accident such as what happened with Leah Leah um, Leah Pruitt's car recently in St. Louis, in NASCAR, one of the things that they really did do is they increased the uh, the technical aspect of finding out why accidents happened, why people got hurt, and how to prevent them in the future. We haven't made those steps in NHRA within the top field categories to do that. They would actually send the cars to a University of Nebraska for research and, and analyzation to find out what actually failed in the car to cause the accident and what failed to cause the individual to get hurt. Dale Sr., who, your, your boss, uh, brought a lot of changes to the sport by actually getting killed in the sport uh, yeah. because the amount of attention that he drew and the scrutiny that that was that came upon that particular incident to find out what actually happened has brought upon things like the Hans device, um, you know, the, the 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 different latching systems in the seat belts, safer so, walls, yeah, safer walls. NHRA with safer walls would be, is is a big one too. Yeah. So I'd say you know there is the financial aspect of it, but as a car owner and a 
person who has a lot of compassion for the guy that's strapping in his race car, I'd like to see more more direction and more leadership and more uh, money spent in the safety aspect of the sport. Yeah, that's I mean, my I, answer. I love your idea that uh, I know NASCAR does it, and and we talked about this when Leah's car broke at St. Louis. Uh, does it cost NHR anything to have that done? Usually, my unfortunately, I supply Nebraska with a lot of wreck race cars. <laughs> um, you know, they they're a university, so it's research. So when they're learning, and the the, the United States, or I don't know what it's called, the highway department is learning from those accidents. Also, I don't believe so. I'm pretty sure we could come up with a technical school that would be willing to to dig into some of the accidents and some of the failures that we've had within our industry. Uh, to help us find out what really happened. Because right now, everything's a guess. You, you, we, we all have our own opinions, and that's that's how it, you get strapped into a race car is on opinions and guesses that this should yep. work. Yep. I think it'll work. Yep, that'll be fine. I hope so. Yep. <laughs> Checks in the mail. Exactly, exactly. So I, I see Mr. Mike Johnson a couple times says, you know, uh, about quarter mile. So I have multiple opinions on going quarter mile. Uh, the first thing I think fans should know, and I'll let both of y'all speak on this. I'm, I'm gonna get my part out because it's my show, I'm host. So would I love to go quarter mile again? Absolutely, just to see how fast we could go. Do I think we should go quarter mile? I do not, and here's the reason couple reasons why. Number one, the tire that Goodyear supplies us, which is an unbelievably good tire for what it goes through and how it's able to do what it does. It is not built to withstand the speeds that it would see in a quarter mile. I mean, uh, when they shorten us from a quarter mile back to a thousand foot, it didn't take long for these crew chiefs to make these cars go faster in a thousand foot than what we were going in a quarter mile. So initially you would see some horrendous explosions if they told us, and I saw on your comment there, you know, there's some tracks we could go to that can handle that. Absolutely. Gainesville's first one comes to mind. Longest racetrack on this, on this entire series. Phoenix could handle it. But what can handle it is that big old rear tire. Uh, I have driven a car without a rear tire on it. Let me rephrase that. I rode in a car without a rear tire on it. Was lucky I stayed upright. Uh, the tires just cannot handle the kind of speeds that would be capable. And I know that NHRA floated a balloon, so to speak, a couple of years ago about, you know, Gainesville doing a quarter mile. But what they did not float when they put that out there was that they were going to attempt to slow the cars down. So what the fans would see if that were to happen is a quarter mile race where the cars actually go slower than what they go in a thousand feet. And again, it goes back to the tire. The tire cannot withstand, I don't know how fast it would be. It would be really freaking fast. Uh, another thing while we're I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll, I'm just gonna keep rolling on this. Another thing is Right now, the racing is as close as it has ever been. I mean, we're seeing races at the finish line. It's super duper close. Well, if we got a sudden rule change, believe me, that closeness that we're having, now granted, Steve Torrance is kicking everybody's butt, but he's he lost some races, even the final race of the year, lost by a few thousands to Antron. But what would happen is the much better finance teams, if there's a major rule change, are going to immediately have a big advantage over smaller teams like ours. Because the multi-car team thing, that will come into play. The R&D that they're able to do, that will then come into play on a major rule change. And then the smaller teams have to do what they can on their own. But right now what we've had is sort of a and Doug, you hop in if I'm doing saying anything wrong here. But right now, the reason I think the competition is so close is that nothing has been changed in the rules for a while. And you've had, you know, crew chiefs and crew people go to other places and everybody is pretty much on a level playing field. All the parts are pretty much the same. It's not that there's not development going on all the time, but 
I think going quarter mile racing is a bad idea uh, financially and competitive wise and fan wise. While I think you would have a gigantic hit for one race, I think, yeah, it would be huge. But, and I see Justin Hofelt just put a great comment up. If we did not have, you know, the orange blocks <clears throat> at a thousand foot or a quarter, you would not know the difference. <clears throat> just saying you know we a lot of people live on what they see on that scoreboard but i don't know you know it's uh i think it's not a great idea i mean i think you could see some fantastic races if we were able to go to some smaller tracks and run eighth mile i won 101 grand at eighth <laughs> mile race one time uh top field cars on eighth mile i think it's awesome top field court cars quarter mile again the driver in me, I'd like to see how fast we could go, but I don't know that I'd want to see what the tires did afterwards. And if something goes wrong, it's even worse. Anybody got something on quarter mile? I kind of rambled there. I mean, they, they ran that quarter mile deal up, up the pole. And I gave my opinion on it from both a fan standpoint and from a, a, a cost perspective. And then there's, I'm, I'm going to go right back into it, a safety perspective. Uh, you know, a candle wicks so long. So if you're going to burn a longer candle, you got to have more wax, which means you got to have more money. Yeah. Um, right now, our, our parts can sustain what we're doing okay. You know, and just like you said, uh, Goodyear does have a great tire for us participating where we're at right now mm -hmm. at the speeds uh, and at the ETs and at the distance we're running right now it would take a significant amount of testing to do that quarter mile run. So the difference it's going to make is going to be that one or two races where you went a quarter mile. That's it. We're not going to increase earnings. We're actually going to reduce earnings. We're not going to increase fan base. We're not, there's, there's, tell me why I'm going a quarter mile other than just to say that we did it. Well, they already did it. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was I'm not a proponent of at all. Cole? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that the safety is the biggest priority here on the table, yeah. um, you know, the one thing that trumps money is, is safety. You have to have safety for these drivers. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of fans out there that, that like the other pro series, the bikes and, and the pro stock cars, and they still go a quarter mile. Yeah. So, I mean, there still is quarter mile racing out there at the professional level with NHRA. I just think everything that Doug has said, um, and, and Clay obviously, and he lives it, um, you know, I can't answer for the driver in the car, but I mean, from a safety aspect and stuff, I just think that a thousand, I don't even want to know what these guys can do it. If you give them back that extra 320 feet, feet. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think we need to do that, but, um, it's still a great show. I mean, oh, it is. it's, it's amazing. And I think once you get out there, you're overtaken, um, by the experience that I don't even think a lot of people realize sometimes, even the, especially the new fans that come in, um, and they're not going a quarter mile, but, um, yeah, you know, I, I know they don't, I mean, you know, yes, I'm, we're all, you know, old timers doing it. We just had a legend sign <laughs> on Scott Palmer's in the house. Scott can't wait to get out there racing with you again, buddy. And, uh, and I, and Mike Johnson, I'm not arguing your point, buddy, you know, uh, just want to see more. I want to see more racing than, you know, the schedule come out. Let's talk about that a little bit. The yeah. schedule's out. It is different. Uh, we start in Gainesville in March. And to me, that that's about as big a change as trying to go quarter mile racing. Unless unless uh, Scotty Palmer's going to set up some uh, match races before then that we can join him with some of the, you know, the nitro shows he's been putting. Hey on. Scott, don't so so I'm gonna bring I'm gonna throw this out there right now. He's he's maybe not like it. Scott, let's do this. Let's take the parts plus top fuel car, and I will spot you. I'll give you the back tire in your Studebaker. Let's go do that. Mm. Let's go do that. How cool would that be? That Studebaker gets parts plus That's top. Pretty awesome. Mile. We going a thousand foot or quarter mile? Eighth mile. Eighth, Eighth mile. Eighth mile. Okay. Eighth mile. Okay. Eighth mile. Okay. <laughs> Hey, let's just I'm just saying let's just do that so man I'm getting totally off topic I had all these things I want to talk about so anyway we're starting in March but I do think that'd be cool wouldn't it to race Scotty and that freaking Nitro Studebaker oh yeah and anytime anytime you get two drag racers out on a racetrack <laughs> I'm coming but yes if you and Scotty want to get out there and 
run those cars. That would be great. Scott, let's make that happen. We, we just heard it from the boss and, and Mr. Cole himself. That would be so freaking cool. I would love for you guys to, to throw it. Yes, ma'am. Make it, how about Houston in February? It's got to be more. It's got to be more. <laughs> Michael Upchurch said, you just drove when I said we're going to give Scotty the back tire. We're going to give Scott the back tire. He might want more than that. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, back to schedule. We start in March in Gainesville, which is odd. I mean, it has to completely. Scotty answers. What Scotty said. Need the four wide track. And we'll use the outside lanes. <laughs> then you'd be safer. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Scotty said it might be dangerous stages outside that Scooter Baker, but uh, exciting. I think it'd be great. I think it'd be awesome. I mean, why not? You know, sure. I, I trust you, Scott. You wouldn't run into me. You just tell us where to be, Scotty. We'll yeah, be there. We'll just tell us how to make that happen. So <laughs> starting in March. So I'm going to give you the race car mechanic side of me. <clears throat> Normally, we would be on our way to PRI show. That that would be going on. Oh, okay. yeah, next fixing, week? Well, no, we, we wouldn't be. We'd be in my barn fixing Lux's golf cart. But go we'd ahead. be fixing Lux's golf cart. I would be on my way to the PRI show. Yeah, yeah. And then, then we'd be coming up behind yes, you with Lux's and seats. Yes, and, you would. And windows and all that. <laughs> so Scott, accepted. Scott said, we'll do it. All right, y'all, we're going to figure this out. We're going to try to figure out how to race Scott in the uh, nitro freaking Studebaker with the Parks Plus top field car. That'd be awesome. We can, we can, uh, we can put some people in the grandstands for that one. I think so too. Anyway, why are we leaving Lutz out? We'll give him. He's using four lanes. Oh yeah, if we got four lanes, if we could do it in Charlotte <laughs> or Vegas, we put Lutz in there somewhere. We'll yeah. spot him a little more. Yeah, a little bit. We'll spot him a little more. So we'll figure that one out too. <laughs> <laughs> we have come off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, so anyway, starting in March is weird. We normally would be, like say, working on Lutz's golf cart before we leave for the PRI show, basically unloading trailers and reloading and, and coal. What, what would you, on a normal this time of year, I mean, I guess we'd already be into paint schemes by this time. We would, right? we would, we would have, we would obviously be ready for the PRI show. We'd have all our partners lined up that uh, that we would do uh, appearances for and autograph sessions for everybody. Um, obviously, that's not happening. There's some virtual stuff out there that that we obviously, um, but yeah, we'd be doing that. And in the middle of doing our um, our, re our renewals and some new folks, hopefully on board before the first of the year which would get to your point about just doing the paint schemes. Um, again, that's that's the fun part because we know our partners are ready to go and we want to get them a cool looking race car and trailer. But, um, you know, you, you have to adjust for the times. Um, I like the little mini East Coast start between, you know, Gainesville and back to back with, with Atlanta and having testing the week before that, I believe, in Palm Beach this year. Wherever we're testing. Gives us a yeah. nice little East Coast cold weather, but but it, it should make for some fun times. Then we get that little mini West Coast uh, run right after that with the uh, with the Pomona, Phoenix, and the um, Las Vegas trio there. So a little different this year, but same results. We'll be there. We'll be going rounds, rocking and rolling, getting some wins under our belt early. So it's quiet in the old nitro barn. Oh. So, I mean. It's sad. You know, Justin, who's on here, and, and Jeff, and the last guys to kind of leave out and shut the lights off and go home until March. And, um, well, it won't I, be quite March, but, yeah, they'll yeah, be back before then. I think Justin, I think he, he'd come back right now, but he's got a pretty good gig going there. And Jeff, I'm sure he's ready to come back. Chris. Minipace. Uh, Minipace is coming back this, this week, just uh, you and him. And yeah, we're just going to go. But it's really quiet. Yeah. It's going to be really weird that far into the year. So we'll do this deal with, with Scotty Palmer, you know, maybe do something <laughs> in Houston. We'll, we'll go test. Um, we'll go. We'll make some action happen somewhere, somehow. So I'm going to ask this one. You live in California. Do you think we'll race Pomona? I mean, you know, I, I right now, do you think we, I mean, you know, where, where it stands right now, just coming from there and knowing that the cases of COVID-19 are up and knowing that they're doing a, a, they're taking us from the purple tier to, I think, a red 
whatever the highest tier is, it's just basically a mini lockdown again. Um, do I think in April we're going to race? Geez, I hope so. Uh, another non-answer for you, Ray. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I, th I think we have a good shot at it if we get these vaccinations out there and we start getting things rolling on the whatever they're doing in Washington, D.C. Hopefully it trickles to the West Coast. Um, but I'm more interested in going racing and, uh, and, and not wanting to sit around waiting for rescheduled races. Um, I know there's a safety aspects there with COVID, but um, but it's time to go racing back in California. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they've ever seen this much of a layoff, and I've never had it since the '30s and the or '40s and they invented drag racing out there. Yeah, so I've never. The actually the when we left Gainesville, that was the longest period I had been in oh. 20 some years without being behind the wheel of a car. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I realized I had two kids and a wife. I was like, whoa, where'd you guys come from? Daddy's home. But they're good. They were happy I, I got out of the house for a couple of days to come see our friends at Parts Plus. So we're uh, we're excited. But, um, but yeah, we're ready to get racing. I just don't like oh. waiting another month Man, after that yeah. February. What do you think? Did we go to Pomona? When is it? Yes. April? April. April, yeah. You do? Yes. I, um, you know, we, we discussed this earlier today. Uh, you know, the news has been so riddled over the last six months with everything from elections to COVID to who's doing what shutdowns and, you know, what governor's doing what. And it's, it's starting to tweak a little more towards the side of uh, when's the vaccinate, when will the vaccination arrive? You know, when will it get delivered? Um, you know, which one's going to be available? I, I firmly believe that we're on the upward climb of getting this uh, repaired and back to normal. I think we'll go to every track that's on our schedule next year. I really, I really do. I, I believe in what the pharmaceutical industry has done to develop this vaccine. Um, you know, there's naysayers. Is, is it real? Is it not real? You know, you have to believe, believe it in yourself and whatever your beliefs are, then you just have to go with it. But we will maintain the uh, safest environment for our guests to come to and our Hearts Plus people and Denso and uh, all of our other sponsors and make sure that we can have a great hospitality and give them a great event. But I think we'll go to every race. And I think that, that NASCAR is with their new schedule and the dynamics that they've built into it is going to increase the motorsports fan awareness greatly over the next three to four years. And we're going to be a part of that with NHRA also. So next thing on the, the schedule. So I've got some questions I posted earlier this week. Uh, sad we're not going to Route 66 this year. Yes. Uh, you know, my very first top fuel car had the white socks on it, and you put together a deal. We had the white yep. socks on the car again, which was really awesome. Uh, you know, and I had some people – commenting blaming nhra for that i don't think that's nhra's fault i'm looking at you because you're on the pro board us not going back to chicago is not nhra's fault or no joliet. i should say joliet yeah. I, should no. I don't i don't believe it's uh, nhra's fault you know there's some reorganization going on at chicago motor speedway that's uh, they've been discussing both revamping the circle track and uh Amazon's done, uh, they purchased some land up there in order to build some warehouses. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe we'll be away from there for a year uh, while those warehouses get built and while the track, I, th I believe the track, the circle track will get reconfigured. And uh, I think we'll be back in Chicago racing in, in a year, maybe two. You know. Really? But, but yeah, I did. I thought it was done. I really did. Heard that and I, heard the other side do know the amazon deal is real and you can yeah. look that up yeah. um i don't i don't think it's done i think we'll be back there um i think that uh the families that are involved up there now are, are kind of dedicated to bringing it back there so just i do and it's illinois it's chicago right it's our, it's, it's that, our land yeah so. that's up there with you yep yep so donna we're getting near our hour i'm sorry for yelling y'all donna's way back there tonight so as always, we're, we're doing a giveaway. In the last few weeks, we've gave away this, like, as I keep saying, Kyle Bush wearing my fire suit. I think, don't you think that looks like Kyle Bush? A little I, bit. I you're, in, you're in this world, Cole, or you used to be, I should say. Yeah, no, he's got still some clay looks to him. Yeah, the fire suit for like sure. Bill Clinton. 
but I mean, it's it's pretty cool. The Denso Parts Plus thing, that's pretty cool. Donna's been back there typing names in as always. And uh, man, this hour has been blowing right by. We're not quite done yet, but uh, so Bristol, that's the next one. We're yes. on the schedule thing. I'm printing it out. You're printing it out. Okay, so I'm not going to run back there with the laptop. She's <clears throat> printing out the winter, the winter tonight. So I think we're going to go to Bristol. Cole? Yes, I feel very confident we're going to Bristol. I already sold the race, so we better. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, again, you're on the pro board. And when I say Doug's on the pro board, professional race organization, it is basically the professional racers voice to the NHRA, and you're on that board. So you hear stuff that can't get out, but I'm asking you the Bristol question anyway. Well, you, I mean, I think we'll go to Bristol. Okay. I, I do. Um, let's just say that in my house, I want to go back to Bristol because in my house, there's a Bristol Cup Pro. Scott <laughs> Palmer one? Oh, God. <laughs> this is funny. Anyway, let's finish up with Bristol. But don't go nowhere, Donna. This, I gotta, you, you don't have to come on camera. But I got a question, so don't go away. Um, you know, we have an NHRA trophy and the, the cup trophy from the Bristol track. And it, it, not going to Bristol is like not – that's it, we're going to go to Bristol. We're going to Bristol. Clay and I may just go with, with our car and go run it, but okay. we're going to Bristol. Oh, I know what we can do. We can go work on Lutz's golf cart. Yeah, we can do that. Right. That's true. Perfect. Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can do that. Yeah. So, Donna, there was a question I see scroll by here, and I know Ray Eddings is going to have a cow because tonight I have been looking over to read questions. But someone wants to know, have I been hitting the practice tree during the off season? Yes. Okay, that's all you're going to say is yes? yes. You're not going to elaborate? Yep. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> I have been hitting the practice tree. All right, so uh, oh, Mr. Craig Albers is on here. Craig with Warner Enterprises. That's how we got oh, yeah. we got the cars that are going to eventually. Craig, thank you, COVID. The, the Warner Enterprises cars that were in the museum that are headed to another museum. They're still sitting at their actually they're at. They look really good where they're at they're right now. Where they're at, yeah, yeah. So our winner tonight, and this was funny. It's what I was laughing about. Is and this is not rigged. I, I know y'all. Trust Donna, but she printed it off the random name generator. And the winner is Blake Berry. And y'all may be wondering, well, why is that funny? Because I only play golf with this guy about four or five <laughs> days a, a, a week sometimes. So, Donna, you still got your names up there. What? You still got your name generator yeah. going? Go, go do, it do it again. Blake. I'll give you a cow bush with my fire suit on when I see you when we're playing golf. But we're going we're going to get one for Watch her bring out Scott Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Go go see if you can get Scott hey, Palmer. Can, can yeah. he use this for a mulligan when he plays? Clay? Yeah. Uh, you have to get for a free mulligan get, for yeah, Blake so he gets something. Let me tell you, he has to give me strokes anyway, <laughs> so okay. uh, I'm not nearly as good as him. All right. We're coming up on the end of the hour. I'm, I am. I'm asking, I've got one more question. So, Cole, what would be your ideal 2021 for the race team? Well, we're going to be in the top 10. I know that. So I want to be in the top five, and I'd like to get a few wins going. And um, honestly, just stay safe and keep this family rolling. I mean, take care of the fans out there. Um, I say all these politically correct answers because I have a lot going on out there <laughs> in the business world. But honestly, um, for everybody watching, um, yeah, I just I just want to be a good, safe year, and I want us to to, to get some Wallies this year. I, okay, I love your answer. I'm sorry, Donald was bringing me more questions, and what the question was is from Mr. Lee Beard unbelievably bad to the bone crew chief won a gazillion races championships he wants to know when is doug coming to breckenridge to ski with him i'll answer that i'll come see you in about two or three weeks but i will not ski with you <laughs> but i definitely will sit at the bar and eat chili and drink with you all right so mr lee beard i do not have your phone number but we would love to have you on the show so 
However, you can get a hold to me. I have his number. You got his number. <laughs> yeah. I would love to have you join me on the show sometime, Lee. Uh, you're a legend in the sport, and I think it'd be awesome to uh, pick your brain for an hour. That's for sure. So Donna has printed off another winner, and it is Brian Mangesser. Mangesser. A lot of bees. Yeah, a lot of bees tonight. Blake Berry and Brian and Gesser. So, Brian, if you're still watching, send me or Jolie Milliken your address, and we will send you Kyle Bush imitating me. And everybody, this has been an absolute blast. It was fun. I don't know if y'all enjoyed it much as, as me, and I hope y'all had fun. Yes. This has been fun. I can't wait till we get to eat that donut. <laughs> and, uh, Thanks for tuning in. As always, you folks are awesome. Appreciate it. And we will see you guys next Tuesday night. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.